I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Today is uh, Thursday, August 22nd. Uh, it's been another good week of fishing here in Southern California. But it's been a little bit windy, and the bad news is it's going to get even windier before it gets any better. And uh, look at the weather forecast uh, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be windy everywhere except the inner waters. And um, some places will be fishable, other places I think will be unfishable. Um, yeah, so if you're a private boater, I would say inside of Catalina or along the coast. Um, and sport boats should be able to fish. Clemente, I don't know about Tanner and Cortez. Uh, big swell out there, a lot of wind. That uh, big bluefin zone, maybe a no-go for smaller boats. Maybe the bigger boats can go out there and do that. But it's uh, supposed to be pretty windy. And uh, I was out this afternoon, and the uh, forecast was to get really windy about 2 o'clock. Wanted to coast, and it was right on cue. So uh, something to keep in mind. Uh, this is not the weekend to go if you have a center console skiff anywhere far anyway. Uh, good news is it's going to get better starting Monday. It looks like we're going to have some decent weather throughout the week. Uh, and even areas where it's not windy, something to consider is there's a big swell, big west wind swell. Uh, this afternoon when I fished Palos Verdes, uh, we had uphill current going into it, and it was uh, uh, difficult to run into it. I mean, I was cruising at less than 20 knots most of the way without uh, pounding my brains out. So something to keep in mind. But that being said, you know, I'll, we'll talk about what, but, what was biting, and hopefully it'll bite again once... Uh, the weather straightens out and I'll try to give you guys some options on what you can do this weekend. So heading up to the Channel Islands. Uh, we had a full moon I think on Monday and it did not pan out for the sea bass. Uh, boats up there caught some fish but uh, reported seeing a lot more fish than they uh, caught on the meter. I know the Aloha Spirit and the Grey Light were both out there all weekend and just uh, during this week and uh, they'd catch two or three fish here or there but uh, nothing to write home about. and. Um, Good news is the bass fish up, fishing up there is pretty good. The islands and rockfish and stuff like that. So there's plenty of bag fillers and uh, action to be had. Uh, speaking of bass, my friend Garrett Ching went up to Santa Cruz Island. I think on Saturday, it might have been Sunday. And he reported really good uh, weedless fishing for calicos at the island. Uh, they're fishing a, a, a LK lure my friend Brian Sander makes. And they actually cut the tail of the, the boot off the tail and they put a... a blade on there and that's a hot bait for them up there um, yeah a little flashier than a normal weedless I haven't caught any fish on it yet I really haven't given a lot of effort to it probably gave me some but uh, the areas I've been fishing a weedless bite hasn't been great so uh, something to think about trying out so the uh, the boats that are fishing along the beach three quarter day boats stuff like that when it's windy on the outside are having really good fishing locally which is good news they're getting sand bass calicos Nice size sheep head, rock fish, stuff like that. So there's plenty of action to be had on the coast. And the weather up there doesn't look that bad on the coast. I don't know if it's uh, skiff friendly or not. Last time I looked, it looked pretty windy. But uh, yeah, so might want to wait a few days before you go out there. Um, heading down to Clemente. There's still some squid at the island, and boats are catching it, and they're catching yellowtail with it. The uh, Poseidon out of H&M Landing made some squid on the uh, two and a half day trip. They fished Clemente, made some squid, and they had 70. 70 nice yellowtail there, and I know the uh, Fury and some of the other boats have been catching fish, Thunderbird, same way. That might be an option for boats that can't make it out to uh, Tanner and Cortez this weekend, but just keep in mind, it will be windy out there. There's not a moment where the wind is not blowing. It's just how strong it's blowing. Doesn't look too nautical, but you know that persistent wind over a few days is going to get that swell up pretty dramatically. So you might be better off uh, waiting until next week. On the front side of the island, I talked to uh, Mitch from Blackfish Charters, and he actually laid in today and tomorrow because of the uh, the weather out there. And he's on a, I think, 36-foot cabo, so that's just something to keep in mind. But he's been having good yellowtail fishing there uh, on the front side of the island, pretty much every trip catching him. And on his way to and from the island a few times, he's been finding Dorado and Calpatties, and he also got a nice bluefin the other day. So uh, this is the time of year to keep your eyes open when you're running anywhere, because you never know where you're going to find. Uh, another boat that's been over there a lot is Sika Sport Fishing. They've been getting some nice yellows. They're out of Dana Point. Nice little four pack boat. And uh, the only bass fisherman I heard of that fished over this week was uh, my friend Oliver Nye from Big Bass Dreams. And he had a 
80 fish up to six pounds uh, when he was over there with some clients the other day and he said they were all catch them on top water and stuff like that. So real fun fishing. You know, you get some current, you get some uh, sunshine over there. can make for pretty fantastic bass fishing. I love fishing. I got a six inch defiant, choked it. It's a beautiful goldfish. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. The boys did work today. <laughs> Bunch of new PBs. Lots of action, 70 plus fish, yeah. bunch of top water eats, doubles, triples. Good job today, boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going kind of quick here because it's really hot in the garage. <laughs> so, and I just fished all afternoon. But uh, Catalina is still happening. I went back over there uh, Saturday with Matt and Chris Oaks, and uh, we ran to the West End backside, and there was just no conditions at all. And it was a gray, overcast sky. Um, which is never good in combination over there. So we ended up driving all the way down towards Ben Weston uh, before we found some current and luckily the sun came out for a little bit. We actually had pretty good fishing. Our, our first area we found was uh, fish on the edge of a kelp bed that had current rain pills of the island and I don't have any video of it here because it's just kind of spaced out but uh, steady bass fishing on small uh, weedless swim baits, five inch swim baits either rigged weedlessly or fished on like a half ounce uh, lead head. And you don't let those sink at all. You cast mounting ones with lead head, just hold your rod up and wind it over the kelp stringers and they'll, uh, if you use a boxer style head, uh, I think VMC makes it, that'll just ride right over the kelp. As long as you keep your rod high, don't stop winding. And we had a lot of bass doing that. Not Nothing real big, uh, you know, two, three pounds. Chris had an absolute giant follow his, uh, bait back to the boat and right before it ate of the two pounder shot in and got that bait. But that was, yeah, we've been talking about maybe seeing a big fish, a cat, and we haven't yet. And that was the one, that was the one that all of us would have liked to have caught. You know, it's the eight plus, you know, it's one of those fish you don't know how big it is, but it's looked like a, looked like a brown colored uh, sea bass coming into the boat. So uh, after that, once the sun came out and the current got running, we switched over to start fishing hard baits. Uh, the bass were biting around boilers, they were biting the kelp. Um, still fishing that big AFCO 165 Blue Fever hard bait. And uh, it's, you know, that's been the most productive bait for us for the last month. Um, I think it's like a sardine color, I don't know. It's not the mackerel color, it's like the blue and silver one. Um, <clears throat> got a couple clips of video here where uh, Mac got a couple nice ones fishing a boiler and then uh, uh, another where we, uh, we caught some fish in the kelp. I was down, I was 27. Huh? You guys need to stretch me. Yeah, I did. Make it easy to cap. We'll hit the boiler and we'll hit that kelp line inside of us here. Well, we won't hit the boiler, hopefully, but uh, no, we'll let's, just let's avoid that. Yeah, let's try not to do that. Well, that's a boat wake, man. Yeah. I don't want to fall in. This is great white infested water. Yeah. Infected. That one would gnaw your toe off. Your lure's fucked up, man. Follow me for other helpful ideas. <laughs> Is it the good helicopter retrieve? Yep. I heard the boat groan there, Chris. What happened? What's that? The boat groaned when you stepped up on it. I, it should. There was the horror church. You fishing the bottom of that boiler?
that would probably make, eat the bare lid in. What's that? I think that would probably eat the bare lid in. <laughs> I thought might we might have more. Oh, man, the other one took a cap. Good boss. I saw a Tacoaris that had a 30 pack of these, but then I looked, there was like the three inch ones. Uh, is that the 4.3 or 4.1? These are four threes. There's some four eights too, though. I don't think it's much matters. Wind, you fucker.
Yeah, so I can't stress enough that you need to find conditions at an island. It's, uh, you can tell when it's going to bite and when it's not going to bite. If there's no sun, no current, very little surge, there's no biting fish. And most of the fish haven't been up real tight to the shoreline, which you can usually get by with just surge. So you need rock and kelp, you need current running parallel to the island, and sun makes all the difference in the world. You know, we went from having, I think, two fish at like nine o'clock to leaving the island with 60 or 70 fish at like 11. So I mean, it really bit when it bit. Uh, the sport boats over there are still catching fish. I know the Sport King and Pursuit and uh, Gale Forest, those boats will be catching a handful of yellows along with the uh, 3Bs, Bass, Barracuda, and Bonita. And uh, there's a ton of that over there. We had to leave a few areas because the Barracuda were so thick. And there was a lot of really small Bonita uh, Big schools of around, and there's also some nicer sized ones. So, if you're over there with a tank of bait, you can probably uh, have some fun uh, mixed mixed bag fishing and may catch a nice yellowtail. Um, you know, barland fishing is kind of more offshore, but it's close enough to the island. I'll talk about it here. There's still biting. Uh, the Balboa Angling Club is actually having a ladies tournament this weekend, and we were going to fish on Jimmy's boat. We had to uh, cancel it because having uh, three ladies and me and Jimmy on a 24 foot center console in this weather trying to fish Marlin probably wouldn't be uh, a whole lot of fun. So I wish all the boats that are fishing had luck. Um, yeah, my friend Sibby uh, went out a couple times this week on his little boat. He's got a little uh, pilot house boat and he's a really good Marlin fisherman, but he uh, he caught multiple fish and uh, you know, if you get out there, figure them out, troll them up, or drop back baits to them, it's pretty, uh, pretty good fishing right now. And hopefully this wind doesn't really uh, blow that up too bad. So heading into the beach, uh, the bass bite along the coast has been good. I know the uh, three-quarter boats, uh, the victory they had limits the other day of calicos. Uh, I know the guys fishing at deeper stones and stuff are catching uh, sand bass and calicos as well. And like I said, I went to PV this afternoon. I saw that uh, my friend Jerry Mayhew from uh, All Harvest Charters was up there, made a post on uh, Facebook and I saw him on the water. He had a couple of really nice calicos uh, for his clients and good bass fishing overall. By the time we got up there, uh, we struggled to find conditions. Most of the current was running straight into the beach and there was a ton of bait outside of the uh, kelp edge, which I found is really not a great, uh, it, not a high percentage area, so we basically didn't even stop the boat and make a cast, so we got up past the uh, Vincenti closure. And then we found areas of biting fish, but they weren't, uh, they were very isolated spots. But we, you know, we were fished again, we, all the fish we caught were on that big uh, AFCO hard bait. I, Matt threw that the whole time, I threw a bunch of different stuff, but uh, that got all our bites. Had a couple of short bites in the weed list that didn't stick. But, uh, What's interesting about that bait up there at PV, it's definitely, there's a lot of small bait up there, but that, that big bait is definitely calling in the bigger bites, and uh, we caught some nice fish on it. I had my GoPro go down at one point, so I missed a couple of good fish we got, but uh, I've got a video of a couple of them here. Are they going to stop you messing around? The best thing in your future. Uh, uh. There's one big puller. That's a puller right there. Wow. How did that or scroll, though? You got some pullers for me? I don't know. I'm just trying to get them up. He went deep. I don't think any followers now. No. Nice one though. Yeah, it's a nice fish. I'd like to get him. I can get him. Oh, you got him. Huh? You got him all right. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a jumbo for a PV, baby. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ugh. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> nice. Half go 150, 165. 165, yeah. Same lure for yellowfin tuna. I'm just watching you fish. Try get two. It's a good one. That's a beauty right there. Biggin. Yep. My favorite part is watching you touch fish. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, that one. That one doesn't give you a hard time. It's, yeah, there you go. So yeah, it was. Uh one of those days where you know you can see it's gloomy in the last uh, video there it uh the sun was out when we got there and then caught a few fish and then it got gloomy and it slowed down and then the sun came out again but the wind started blowing like 15 to 20 knots <laughs> so we we called it a day we launched at 11 and we were back at i was uh boat back in the driveway by 3 30 so if that tells you it was a very short trip um, down south, they're having good bass fishing as well. I got another report from Kieran Murphy. He's been fishing out of Oceanside. Had a really good calico bass fishing on, on lures, feeding on the surface. He was getting them on ESP minnow. And uh, he said the water conditions down there were beautiful, 73 degree water and biting fish. So you can't go wrong with that. Got a message from uh, my friend Tom Troop. He fished multiple times this week, as he always does. He said every trip he caught multiple fish over five pounds. He said the fishing in the areas where he's fishing in North San Diego County is not as good as it was. The fish are not in a spawning mode like they were, but um, they're definitely biting and they're good sized fish. Um, a little further south, the half day boats and twilight trips out of uh, San Diego have had really good fishing lately. The uh, uh, new Seaforth had ran three trips, morning half day, afternoon half day, and twilight yesterday, and they had 26 yellows between those three trips and one nice white sea bass. Um, a lot of those fish being caught on the surface there, which is cool to see. My friend Danny Erickson took his daughters uh, down for a half day trip before they had to go back to school. And they caught some uh, nice yellows. His daughter Tessa got one on the surface iron and a lot of nice bass as well. <clears throat> so that's good fishing. And uh, the sand bass are also still biting down there. The Premier had uh, limits a few trips this week. I think those are still more migratory fish down there, but it's pretty late in the season for migratory fish, but I think it might be due to the fact that we had such a cold and gloomy uh, June. Um, Coronados, yellowtail bite is still happening down there. It's a really good grade of fish. I saw a report from the uh, Liberty that they, uh, they uh, get it right down here somewhere. They had 33 yellows and one bluefin yesterday, I think, for 30 guys. And they said that, you know, you need heavier tackle, and they recommend bringing 30-pound gear out to fly line baits with. And uh, he said the guys with the, with the bass gear are just getting tooled. So these are bigger fish. They're near structure. Uh, the San Diego had good fishing as well. They had, I think, 77 fish one day. And they, they pointed out that the people who know how to fly line a bait caught the majority of them. And, you know, knowing how to fly line a bait sounds pretty simple. We can all do it, hook a bait, drop it over the side. But... The reality is, is the mistake most people make is that uh, they fish their bait for too long. If you're fly lining a sardine, you should be changing your bait every 45 seconds or less. A minute at the longest. And a good way to make yourself do that is butt hook that bait, underhand lob it out, and let it swim with your line. The moment it stops swimming, give it a little backwards tug. You want to keep that rod in upward angle. Give it a little backwards tug, put it in the pre spool, see if that bait darts away again. And if it doesn't dart away again, wind it in, get a new bait, do it again. It seems uh, like a lot more work, but it's going to get a lot more bites. And 90% of the bites here you get in the first 30 seconds of your bait hitting the water. So you're one of those guys that casts out and drinks a beer and has a cheeseburger and your line's looping all over the place and catching everybody else's line. You're not going to have great success. Um, the 
charter boat's down there doing well. That lucky bee's been down there, it seems like all summer, just slaying them every trip. My friend uh, Jamie on Seasons been going down there. He's had good fishing as well. I think for the sport boats, it's more of a bait bite. I think if you're a skip, you can probably catch them on a surface iron pretty well. Just uh, try and find an area that does not have a bunch of boats around and you'll uh, have better success. And I'd imagine with the weather on the outside, we might have uh, quite a few boats here this weekend. So heading offshore, again, all this is going to be probably blown out. I'm not guaranteed of this, but I'm saying it's probably going to be pretty windy. Uh, big bluefin zone bit all week. Really good fishing. Guys are saying it's the best fishing they've seen all year. Um, good quality fish. Long range boats are there. The four pack boats are there. Private boaters. They're getting them on flying fish. Big foamers of fish up. Uh, I saw uh, Billy K. He's uh, been slaying them all summer basically, but uh, he's had a couple of rare open spots on his uh, on his Freeman. He has one of his captains running it, but uh, that's a guy who's usually booked out the whole season before you know, springtime. So if you want to fish with that guy, you might want to look him up on social media. I know he gets a lot of controversy online and all the other stuff. I've known him for years and he's a good fisherman and a straight shooter. So can't go wrong with that. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, my friend uh, Oliver and I again fished uh, bluefin as well this week. And uh, he said the fishing was pretty good on the 170 to 200 pound great fish. Uh, he did that on his uh, his bay boat, which I don't think you're going to be able to do this weekend, but uh, maybe he said he's, he's done fishing for the week just due to the weather. Uh, Tanner Banks, same thing. Tanner and Cortez, they're catching yellows, they're catching bluefin. I talked to uh, <clears throat> Jeff Barkland yesterday, and he said that the, uh, the conditions were quite challenging on their last trip, and uh, I don't really see a lot of boats fishing out there this weekend. You know, we have this big west wind swell. Uh, sustained winds out there and it's probably going to make some pretty rough conditions but you know if you're going on a multi-day trip they may do it on one of the bigger boats but uh, I wouldn't do it on my own boat. So uh, on the local banks there's some action happening again I mentioned that uh, Mitch uh, caught bluefin in uh, Dorado on his trips earlier in the week. They're starting to see some more bluefin down below Catalina um, I don't know if those fish are just moving through, but there's plenty of bait in that area. They might be more fish around than we know. There's not as much coverage as there was during the summer, but uh, I would expect those fish to pop up continuously here until this water cools down. Um, I got a report from uh, Andrew Sherritt. I don't know if I'm saying his last name correctly, but he fished in the ocean side and they found a patty with a wide open Dorado and yellowtail and they had uh, their big fish with a 36 pound yellow which is a pretty nice fish. And in other good news, down south, uh, the boats out of Ensenada got back on those bluefin. Um, and they're on Pongas. So they're on a fairly short leash from uh, the point there in Ensenada. And I don't know how much fish is down there. There hasn't been a lot of boats looking down that way, but I think with the weather we're having in the northern zone right now, it may get some more coverage this weekend. So I'm really hoping for the full day boats and stuff out of San Diego, that area lights back up. I know it's definitely colder water that down there it was last week than it is up here, but hopefully that's recovering and uh, we see some more fish come out of there. But yeah, keeping it short today because it's hot and I hope you guys have a great weekend and good luck if you fish.